Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Devedi. And in this segment today, we are going to discuss about Indo-US defense cooperation. This topic is important from the perspective of prelims and also from the perspective of GS mains paper too. So let's begin with the topics of discussion that we are going to look at gradually. First of all, we will talk about why news which will be followed by certain key points of the news. And then we will discuss about America's security agenda and what will be India's role or significance in achieving those agendas. We will also discuss about Indo-US relationship and in the last of the segment, I will give you a main space question for answer writing practice. So let's begin with the first ever topic, why news? Now, the Joe Biden administration has completed its two months term in the office and the defense secretary, the first ever African-American Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has been on a tour against China. In the sense, this tour is actually for allies. Allies in the Asia such as Japan, South Korea and the last leg of the tour remains India. Now, if we talk about South Korea, Japan and the US, they are looking for another engagement that is a rejuvenated trilateral arrangement. And of course, India is a formidable ally when it comes to China in the Asian region. So let's look at what are the significance of this particular tour. First is that strategic relationship with India is going to be the topmost priority for the US and the stepping up of the entire charisma of strategic partnership with India for US is going to be reiterated. Also, it's a beginning of a new chapter in India's ties with the US and the US Secretary of Defense will hold deliberation at the highest levels of Indian government. So, the three-day deliberations. He has already met with the Prime Minister of India Narendra Modi and also in the next few days, he will also meet with NSC, National Security Advisor Ajit Doval. Also, perhaps S. J. Shankar, the Ministry of External Affairs and importantly, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh. So, we can of course make out from the fact that the new administration continues to grow and grow in a manner that is thrusting hard when it comes to India in the Asian region. And as we have already noticed that last week, it was a very high profile meeting which was conducted by the Biden administration and the Prime Minister of India was also present. And Quad and Indo-Pacific has been made clear time and again by the Joe Biden administration. The priority of Quad is immense for this current administration and India of course will be a key partner. Also, the global press is track tracking this engagement because the agenda is global. Global in nature and it goes beyond Chinese aggression. Of course, China is one of the basic pillars of this engagement, but it will also impact whatever India may cooperate with the US will also impact Southeast Asian region, South Asian region and specifically Indo-Pacific. So let's now look at Af if we talk about America's security agenda. First is that Chinese aggression. Chinese aggression in South China Sea and of course the Indo-Pacific region is a major concern for America, India, Taiwan, Japan, South Korea, Vietnam, Cambodia, Brunei and what not. Which other countries? There are so many countries that are affected by China right now. So China being an expansionist, an aggressive expansionist needs to be Toned down and America and the Indian administration should look forward to cooperating in the region and of course the Afghan peace deal. Now if we talk about the Afghan peace deal, the peace deal was already signed by the Trump administration but the current administration is affected by the slow pace of talks actually and India can be a major key player when it comes to Afghanistan. First let's discuss about South China Sea. Now South China Sea if we talk about is huge and it's the arm of the Western Pacific and as we can see this entire region is actually South China Sea. 
it is approximately so huge that if we talk about a ship a ship if we talk about military ship traveling it will take 3 days from reaching here in supposedly malacca street between malaysia and singapore we have the malacca street so from here to taiwan north of taiwan it would take approximately 3 days for the ship to reach so you can imagine the enormity of it also there are so many countries that share interest in south china sea if we talk about vietnam then cambodia also laos has also certain interest and taiwan and philippines brunei malaysia and singapore so these are the literal states that need an interest in that have an interest in south china sea so if we talk about the united nations convention laws of the sea it was formally adopted and signed in 1982 but very few countries at least minimum of 6 countries were having any military interest in this entire region but if we talk about the gradual pace of time gradual pace of time becomes complicated because of chinese military presence there was a creeping militarization of this entire area and the actual shock waves to the world went when three military grade mid ocean airfields were developed in the islands of south china sea and in the year 2016 what happened 2016 there was a historic decision where an international tribunal in the hague it ruled against the chinese claims to the sea and that case was brought by philippines but china has actually said that we have a historical hold or ownership over this entire region it calls it the nine dash line map showing 2000 years ago historic ties with this entire region historic ownership of this region and it goes from the henan islands of mainland china engulfs parisel islands pratli islands scarborough shoal and goes back to taiwan so this is the actual reason china holds claim but there is no scientific or scientific evidence to this claim so that is why now because of this reason that there is no scientific evidence and all the other literal states also hold the powers over the natural resources of the south china sea and us although does not have any direct claims but the us supports free and open south china sea indo pacific region for commercial vessels to travel but if china will take over or dominate the entire region that would be next to impossible now china had rejected the authority of the tribunals by saying that they have no rights to have a say in such cases because it belongs to china and the us says that the world will not allow beijing to treat the south china sea as its maritime empire that was actually said by mike pompeo Now if we talk about the importance the biggest importance is economic economic because global trade worth more than 5 trillion dollars travel through this area and of course so many literal states as well as india has a lot of ties with the western world when it comes to trade through Ch- south china sea then regional and international trade regional of course we have talked about the regional trade and international with of course the us and that is why us wants this area to remain free sustainably free and open and india also says because india has not ever directly come across come against china when it comes to south china sea but indirectly it has because it says that if we talk about south south china sea this is a litmus test for international maritime law and india has actually if we talk about india's interest india has time and again with the help of vietnam 
kept on exploring the exclusive economic zone of Vietnam against Chinese objections with the help of Videsh, ONGC Videsh. ONGC Videsh explores the area and supplies oil to Vietnam. And India has also formalized defense ties with Brunei. And also when it comes to maritime sector, it has formalized defense mechanism, defense institutionalization with Brunei. And recently, the US has also accepted and sanctioned submarine spares to Taiwan. Taiwan also holds claims to South China Sea. So this is the actual thing about South China Sea. And if we talk about the Indo-Pacific region, let's see. First, this is a news where India said that India has abiding interest in the stability of the disputed region of South China Sea. We have already discussed why. Moving on, let's talk about Australia's interest. Now, this is a news piece from 2020 where Australia rejected Beijing's territorial claims over South China Sea. So, as we can see, Japan, South Korea, Australia, they all have strategic, economic and military interest in this region. And they all are the allies of US, the United States. Moving on, let's talk about the Indo-Pacific region. Now, it is a very new concept. 10, day, uh, 10 years ago, it started to come into the news. And right now, in the Trump's administration, of course, it had a lot of heft. And in Joe Biden's administration, again, it is proving to be of great concern, not only for the US, but also for India, because of the expansionism of China. And if we talk about this entire region, as you can see, this entire region has Asia. Asia in the sense that the economic signal you can say or you can say the economic well-being of the world right now has shifted from West to Asia. And that is why this region is of great importance because of trade, natural resources, oil and natural gas, also fisheries and also of course the so the sheer importance of this place is economic. And if China will have a hold on the South China Sea, it will definitely proliferate. It will, of course, proliferate. Proliferation is a must with China to the entire region. And it has become a power play for both the West, Asia, and of course, India and China. And to preserve this, Quad an informal semi-summit level talks. It is, it is not formal right now. It is an informal mechanism between Japan, Australia, also if we talk about India and the US. These are the four countries who hold interest in Quad, who want to formalize Quad in order to tackle China. But China is of course not happy. And it, is, it's a, it has a parallel by the name of Malabar exercise. Now, Malabar exercise is a naval exercise that was conducted at an unprecedented level this year. It started in 1992 between US and India. Then in 2015, Japan joined and recently it was joined by Australia, which was of course, it actually came off as a slight for China. So, this is the Entire scenario. Now, if we talk about Afghanistan peace plan, Afghanistan peace plan, the current peace plan is built on the last government's, last administration's peace plan, the Trump administration's peace plan that was signed with Taliban in February 2020. The last remain, the last phase of the American army of 2,500 so soldiers, they remain and they are to be withdrawn out of the Afghanistan soil by 1st of May 2020, after that, Taliban has, has said that if the American troops stay there, they will of course start on retaliating against them at an unprecedented, never before seen level. But the Biden administration has rejuvenated the plan, has said that we need to be constantly in talks with Taliban and have a political solution so that violence may stop. And if we talk about the approach, it should be an accelerated approach according to the current government. 
accelerating the peace process. Also, it has started with a shared written proposal with Afghan leadership and the Taliban to accelerate talks to come at one table. It also proposed a UN-led conference of representatives of the key stakeholders of Russia, China, Pakistan, Iran, India and the US to discuss a unified approach to support peace in Afghanistan and best way to prevent a complete Taliban takeover is regional peace process and an interim unity government. But the Biden administration is not hasty enough. In the sense, it does not want quick recoveries of lost territories by Taliban as soon as the troops leave. Because the, govern the legitimate government, if we talk about Afghanistan, they still think that if troops are withdrawn hastily, there will be a spike in violence. Now moving on, let's talk about what does the Ghani administration say. Ghani administration has time and again made it clear that his power actually rests on his legitimacy and the moment that legitimacy is gone, the whole thing implodes in the sense that the Ghani government is saying that we are a legitimate government and if the US and other stakeholders such as Russia, India, if they ever come in direct talks with Taliban, what will the power mean for the legitimate government as well as the entire citizenry of Afghanistan? Let's move on and talk about the significance of India. Now, if we talk about the defense significance, it is immense because in 2016, the US designated India as a major defense partner and that was actually done under National Defense Authorization Act of 2017, authorizing the secretaries of state and defense to take necessary measures. Now, if we talk about South China Sea, of course, India is a formidable ally. It's extremely enormous and effective naval power is the biggest reason. And Act East policy, under Act East policy, not only look East, but Act East in the sense, we need to have friendly, warm, economically stimulated uh, relationship with our neighbors in the Southeast Asian region. That is why India needs to secure and safeguard the interest of Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, Brunei and Taiwan in the South China Sea region. And of course, Sagarmala. Sagarmala for a more stimulated, economically stimulated and strategically stimulated area, India needs to safeguard its own region in the Indian Ocean. Moving on, let's talk about Indo-Pacific Quad. Quad and Malabar exercise, the biggest weapons right now. There will definitely be a question when it comes to Quad Malabar exercise this year in mains examination and prelims also. And Malabar exercise is actually a parallel of the quad, the summit level, the semi-regular meetings under informal channel between Japan, Australia, India and US. Keep that in mind. And if we talk about peace deal in Afghanistan, India already has a developmental role, has maintained a development role even after Taliban came into existence. So that could be acting as a soft power. India has capitalized its own relationship with the US and other countries under democratic, inclusive and pluralistic convergence. Also, rule makers through Taliban Sanctions Committee, which is also known as the 1988 Committee, because now India has a little bit of dilemma here, we have already covered that, but India should be thinking from the same prism as US is but not actually let its sovereignty come under question. Moving on, let's talk about the Indo-US relations. We have covered this from the perspective of defense. All right. So if we talk about this joint strategic vision, this was with the first Obama administration by announcing a joint strategic vision for the Asia Pacific and Indian Ocean region in 2015. Now back then also during the Obama administration, it was time and again reiterated India's participation in the Asia Pacific, in the Indian Ocean region. Then comes strategic and commercial dialogue. Strategic vision, it was followed by an elevating the Indo-US strategic and commercial dialogue, which was launched in 2009 and the first round held in 2010. Then we have already discussed about military exercise, GSOMIA. 
It was the first general security of military information agreement relating to security of each other's military information signed in 2002. And Yuma, it was actually signed in 2009, but then it was not that well because on the grounds that it was jeopardized India's strategic autonomy. Now, if we talk about Lemoa, it was signed in 2016. And it was actually meaning that the militaries of both the countries can replenish each other on the mainland ports and reimbursement would be allowed. So, assistance, military assistance. Then comes Comcasa and it means Communication and Compatibility Security Agreement that was signed in 2018, permitting encryption standards of communication system. That means whatever the information that is extremely sensitive in nature between the military commanders and air force would be shared in an encrypted manner both in times of peace and war. Also, then comes Becca, the signing of the Basic Exchange and Cooperation Agreement. Now, this was one of the last four foundational agreements. What does it actually mean? It actually means exchange of geospatial, real-time geospatial data, American geospatial data, which would on a map help India to have aeronautical information and real-time information which will help Indian military like missiles and to locate missiles and drones. So that's also important. Moving on, let's look at our question. Indo-US relations in contemporary times is based on mutual trust and cooperation and in the light of this statement, critically analyze the prospects of Indo-US relation. In the contemporary times, you have to write them in 250 words. So that's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then, stay updated and thank you so much for watching.